This channel has spoken a lot about Thomas Hobbes and Edmund Burke, but arguably UK conservatism today has been more influenced by Friedrich Hayek and Milton Friedman, economists of what became known as neoliberalism. To get at what neoliberals or what the problem was, we must look to the small L labour movement. Throughout the late 19th century and up to the late 1980s, there existed an increasingly mighty trade unionist and socialist movement. This movement both lobbied popular opinion and launched industrial action to secure higher wages and fewer hours. It eventually succeeded after two world wars in establishing a consensus where governments would intervene in every aspect of life to ensure full employment. This was across free Europe Australasia, the US and Canada. This post-war consensus worried an Austrian economist called Friedrich Hayek, who warned against government central planning in his 1944 tract, The Road to Serfdom, which said statism would lead to ruin. Two years later, he helped found a like-minded group of economists called the Mont Pelerin Society. He said, in order to have a prosperous society, in the long run, individual freedom had to be prioritised. Milton Friedman, an American economist, agreed largely. Friedman stated that the money supply was closely related to inflation. And this school of thought came to be called monetarism. Neoliberal policies were to greatly lower tax, control government spending tightly, end dependency culture arising from extravagant welfare states, deregulate and privatise and reduce the bore power of bodies pushing for state intervention, like trade unions, a famous one being the National Union of Mine Workers, whose illegal 1984 strike was defeated by Thatcher, not to mention the Greater London Council, headed by Red Ken Livingston, which Thatcher abolished in 1986 for being statist. The Conservatives are no longer dominated by the post-war consensus on nation Tories, but rather Hayek and Friedman's neoliberalism. Although COVID-19 may have ushered in a shift towards interventionism, and Britain seems, however, despite Brexit, a much more dynamic and lively place for neoliberalism. From the futuristic towers of Canary Wharf to Scotland's oil boom, today it is fashionable to decry neoliberalism for causing inequality, but most people in the UK today live better than medieval princes. Ultimately, it's better for society to be well-off but unequal than poor but equal.